handle all German business in the United States. Union Banking Company worked in concert with the royal Dutch family, specifically Prince Bernhard, through Thyssen's Dutch banks. Thyssen had control of many German banks as well as those in Holland and Union Banking Company and Brown Brothers Harriman in the U.S. In this way, Thyssen could funnel money out of Germany through Holland and into the United States through Union Banking Company. When reserves at Thyssen's German banks needed replenishing, Prescott Bush laundered the Nazi money through Brown Brothers Harriman and sent it back to Thyssen's banks in Germany. Thyssen relocated to the United States in 1939 as he had planned years in advance, just as the Second World War was about to erupt. For his part, Prince Bernhard went on to help form the Bilderberg Group. In October 1942, the abuse had become so blatant that the U.S. government seized all the Nazi banking operations managed by Prescott Bush. Union Banking Corporation and Prescott Bush were charged with trading with the Enemy Act, and all their stocks were seized. Then the U.S. seized two Harriman companies led by Bush, Holland America Trading Corporation and Seamless Steel Equipment Corporation. Then in November 1942, yet another Walker Bush Corporation was seized, Celestian American Corporation. It was official. The Bush family had assisted the Nazis in financing and making the steel to kill Allied soldiers. This was treason. Approximately one-third of the German war machine was financed by Thyssen through the Bush family. Incidentally, when Thyssen died in 1951, the assets were unfrozen and Prescott Bush, soon to be a Connecticut senator, was given $1.5 million. Chase Manhattan Bank received 31% of the Thyssen fortune at this time. The Rockefellers were in it up to the top of their heads. Today, the Thyssen Group is the wealthiest industrial in Germany. The Bush family has gone on to create financial alliances with the Bin Laden family of Saudi Arabia through the Carlyle Group. One wonders when these engineered wars and atrocities will stop. As well, in 1933, General Electric made payments to strengthen the Nazi party, which helped put the uniforms on Himmler and his SS street thugs. A donation of 60,000 Reichmarks was made to Hitler by German General Electric, AEG, which had four directors and a 25 to 30 percent interest held by the U.S. General Electric parent company. Gerard Swope, an originator of Roosevelt's National Recovery Administration, Owen Young of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, and Clark Miner of International General Electric were dominantly in control of German General Electric. Almost all the directors of German General Electric were Hitler backers. GE was also cooperating with the Nazis, Gustav Krupp von Bohlen und Hanbach, and Krupp Steelworks. GE actually restricted U.S. development of tungsten carbide to the detriment of the U.S. in World War II. Somehow, the German General Electric plants managed to avoid being bombed the entire war by the Allies. Apparently, Churchill, Roosevelt, Truman, and Eisenhower and the combined military of the Allies just overlooked them accidentally, inadvertently, and they would have us think we were not patriots to even consider otherwise. General Electric now owns NBC, MSNBC, CNBC, and a multitude of media networks throughout the world. Coincidentally, they aren't broadcasting this information either. In 1934, Irene DuPont of the DuPont family, William S. Knudsen, president of General Motors, and other banks from the DuPonts, the J.P. Morgan Bank, and General Motors financed a coup d'etat to install a fascist dictatorship in the United States. General Smedley Darlington Butler was approached by the plotters to lead the new military government, but instead blew the whistle on this Wall Street conspiracy to Roosevelt. The story was leaked to the press, which led a number of the conspirators to leave the country while the heat was turned up. According to Jules Archer, the fascist takeover of the United States was to be maintained under a dictator on behalf of America's bankers and industrialists. Congress merely conducted a token investigation and four years later published a report that was restricted to only a few eyes, but the report did acknowledge that certain persons did make an attempt to form a fascist organization. General Motors German